Hey guys, what's going on? This is Jason with JW Classic VW, and we are out, out and about, <laughs> driving around uh, because that's what we do. We love to cruise in our cars, and it is getting hot. Temperatures are warming up, summertime is almost here, and you guys have been sending me some comments and emails asking me questions about what you can do to make sure that your air cooled engine is kept cool. You know, there's all kinds of different things that go into that, and that's what I want to talk about today, guys. I want to talk about the top five things to keep your air-cooled engine cool. And the things you need to look out for, things you need to look into, and maybe some of the options that are available to you. So right after this intro, we're gonna get into some great content on keeping your air-cooled engine cool. Especially right now, with the summer heat getting cranked up. So guys, see you in a minute, right after the intro. Oh yeah. Okay, so the first thing we want to talk about, guys, is some of the basic information that is going to be helpful to you, helpful to you with your air cooled engine, and some of the some of the basic stuff I've written down, and I've got references, guys. So do me a favor, check out the description below if you're interested in some of the areas that I went to to pull this information from, because some of it comes from Berg, some of it comes from some of the forums out there, and I know you guys are going to want to check out that as well and go through the reading. So check it out, description below. But first off normal operating temperatures for oil. So there's two main things, two main categories that you guys wanna look at when it comes to your air-cooled engine and keeping it cool. The first is the lifeblood, your oil, your engine oil temperature. The second is head temperature. What should your head temperature be at? Because for an air-cooled engine, your heads are super important. And if they're getting too hot, then you've got a big issue. Engine oil will fluctuate. Anywhere between 170 degrees and 220 degrees is normal operating temperature. So I'm gonna go ahead and put up a little picture over here of normal operating temperatures. There you go, guys. <laughs> so I like my back seat. I just never get to sit in it because <laughs> I'm always driving, right? So let's talk about head temperatures, guys. And there's different, you know, levels that you go from anywhere between like 350 degrees Fahrenheit up to say 500 degrees Fahrenheit and it really has a lot to do with how you drive your car and the type of heads that you're running. Uh, higher performance heads can handle higher heats and you don't really get into any kind of like thermal breakdown when it comes to valve guides and stuff like that on those heads because they're designed to handle the heat. Now with your stock application anywhere between 250 to 350 degrees Fahrenheit is about the norm. Under a load, let's say you're going through a lot of hills and you're cruising around, uh, really getting onto it, you know, Goose and I. We, uh, we drive kind of crazy sometimes. So the temperatures are gonna be a little bit higher. Anything above 500 degrees, and you're probably getting into an area where things are gonna start to break down. You're probably starting to see those valve guides start to wear out sooner, and some issues with your valves. Now there's quite a few different factors that help keep your head temperatures down. One of them being the type of gas that you run. You can never go wrong with running a higher octane gas. It's just gonna burn cleaner and burn cooler. The lower octane gases, like let's say, like the 87s or I don't know if there's anything lower than that. That's what we got around here in Houston. 87, it's going to burn hotter, but you're going to get a little more bang. You know, you're going to get a little more uh, kick out of it. So that's kind of a trick, right? If you want to run uh, a lower octane, though, you need to have a lower compression. The general is almost at a 10 to 1 compression ratio. So I want to make sure that I'm running a higher octane gas anyway, because you start getting that pinging sound and it doesn't run right. And that's no good for anybody. The dang mosquito in here. <laughs> this is what happens when you hang out in the shade in Houston. The mosquitoes come after you because that's where they hang out too. So those are the basic temperatures, guys. So basic oil temperature anywhere between 170 degrees to 220 degrees is kind of like the normal operating range. Anything above 250 degrees Fahrenheit with your oil temperatures and begin a little bit sideways. At that point, you start uh, having issues with your head studs and they could be coming loose and that's no good. You don't want that to happen. And you also get premature wear on other components when you're running at that higher temperature of oil. Now, let's get into number one. The, the number one thing you wanna look at when it comes to your, your engine. And what is that? I'm sure most of you guys already know, but your engine seals. You gotta keep that temperature zones. There's two zones on your engine. You need to keep the temperature zone separate. You need to have the cool zone, which is above the engine seal. And then you gotta have the hot zone, which is below the engine seal. So let's go back and take a look at the general and talk about what I'm referring to. All right, guys, let's get back there. 
All right. Let's take a look. See. Let's take a look. See. What's going on here in the general? I'll take you off the tripod so I can show you what I'm talking about. So the main engine seal that we're looking at here is the engine seal that goes around the front, the front breastplate tin here. And you want to make sure that it's in good shape and that it's pliable. Some of you guys, if your engine seal is like falling apart or it's all rigid, it's not doing its job. So what you need to do is replace it. And some of you guys are going to be like, well, geez, what, do I got to take the engine out to do that? Well, yeah. You know, there <laughs> people have tried to replace this thing with the tin still in here, and you are going to just have a serious pain in the butt. Now, with a stock engine, it's not that hard to get the engine out. Honestly, it's not. With a bigger engine, you got to take off the carbs and, you know, well, it's just a whole ordeal to get the uh, engine out. But it's still the only way, well, the easiest way and the best way to get in here and replace the seal. Now, you can also see that I've added a seal up here around my uh, oil, my oil uh, dipstick to kind of block off the hole that was there. That hole right there is uh, where the original breather kind of went because they're used, to, you know, the OG oil fill had like a, has a metal tube that goes down there and it allows it to, to breathe out. And well, I don't have that. Not with this monster engine. So that's the first thing guys is engine seals. And really it's just the one main seal on the front here. And there's an engine seal around the back side the back side of the engine, which, you know, it's kind of really hard to show you that. Yeah, that's the first thing. What I think we'll do now is we'll move on to a new location to go ahead and do number two. Guys, for number two, <laughs> things that keep your air-cooled engine cool, I bring you to one of the landmarks down here in Kima. Turn you around real quick. What is that? <laughs> that's T-Bone Toms, guys. Yeah, they got really good steak there, and actually in the parking lot right across from T-Bone Toms. It's the community center for Kima. So let's take a seat real quick and talk about number two. So we got all kinds of crazy traffic going on right now. <laughs> so if you hear any noise, that's what it is. Number two should come as no surprise to you guys. It's engine tin. And just like the seal that goes around the back of the engine, there is certain tin that you want to make sure that you have, especially the tin underneath your engine. And when you've got J-tubes like I do, the, the big birds header system on the general, you need to add industrial tins. Check out the video right here, guys, on how to make your own industrial tins. So what are industrial tins? They help f channel the air, the hot air, out the back of your Volkswagen Beetle engine. Now, you want to make sure that none of your engine tins are missing. Check out the description below to industrial tins and who is it awesome powder coating awesome powder coating has a lot of information on what kind of tins you have or what kind of tins you might be missing hit up the comments below if you're missing tin on your vw engine i know some of you guys are a lot of you are missing that breastplate across the front of your engine because it's a pain in the butt to put in right well you want to make sure that's installed because if you don't have that installed any of that tin will allow hot air to get into that cool air zone all right guys go to the back of the car real quick and talk about how that works out exactly. So on your VW engine, when I'm talking about the two zone system. So on your VW engine, when I'm talking about the two zone system, the engine area is your cool zone and anywhere underneath your engine is supposed to be pushing hot air out the back of the car. Now, when you're driving down the road, it's not such a big deal because air just naturally pushes it out the back. Cool air gets sucked in through the top area here. Now, some guys will push out and put little standoffs on their deck lid to help get cool air in there. But if you don't have that, you are relying solely on cool air to come in through here. Now, if you're missing any of the engine tin in your engine bay, like the front breastplate here, if you have more of a stock application and you've got the heater tubes coming down off of your, off of your uh, fan shroud, then you're gonna have to go ahead and block off those holes, the holes that you have in your breastplate up here. If you don't, hot air is gonna get right into your engine compartment and get sucked in the backside. Speaking of the backside of your shroud, you wanna make sure that your, the, the heat insula insulation that's back here, this kind of sometimes can come loose, that it is not coming loose and getting sucked into the back fan. You also don't wanna cover up that back fan area there on your shroud with an oil cooler. That is one of the worst things you can do, guys. It will heat up your engine super quick way faster than you want it to be. So make sure you've got all your engine tin, guys. You don't want any of that missing. So when it comes to engine tin, 
buying empty, <laughs> you're always gonna be modifying it. You have to cut it back, you're gonna have to work with it to get it into place. Let me tell you, on my back engine piece there, that's not stock. Well, actually, quite a bit of the tin isn't stock. It's not German-made OG engine tin. And I had to manipulate it <laughs> in quite a few different ways to get it to work right, guys. So if you ever have the opportunity to pick up OG, original German tin, that is the best. You can get that on places like the Samba. And you know, if you go to like a junkyard or something like that, I'm sure you can pick it up. There's all kinds of forums on Facebook too where guys are selling engine tin. So, you know, that as well. The cost, now, it's like gold. Did you guys know that German engine tin is made out of gold apparently? And it costs a lot of money? <laughs> well, yeah, it does. <laughs> so guys, moving on to the next location for number three. All right, guys. The Kima Boardwalk. It's a big wooden roller coaster for number three. So number three is one of the more important things that you need to do with your Volkswagen Beetle, and that's a tune-up, guys. The uh, tune-up includes quite a few different things. Spark plugs, plug wires, cap, rotor. Uh, if you have electronic uh, ignition, not points. If you have points, points too. You need to gap those things properly, guys. I think it's like 16 thousandths is the gap that you need on your tune-up. Also with a tune-up, you want to go ahead and make sure your timing's right. And now that is super important when it comes to how hot your engine's running. Now for a stock application, around 28 degrees advance at 3,000 uh, 3, RPMs is about the norm. Uh, when you have a higher horsepower engine, you might need to advance it a little bit more between 30 to maybe 34 degrees advance at 3,000 RPMs. Now, I've had Few different videos on how to do the timing on your engine and just uh, check out right here right here right here if uh, you're interested in figuring that out okay guys also something to, to include with your tune-up is your air filters you need a especially if you don't have the oil bath yeah air, uh, air filter which if you have an oil bath air filter then you got to change oil in that <laughs> now with regular air filters you need to make sure they're clean depending on how much you drive and what kind of conditions you drive in are going to determine how often you replace your air filters but that's also part of your tune-up next thing you need to check a look at is your belt now your belt and how tight your belt is is also going to affect the way that you're uh cooling your engine if you have it too tight it's not going to work right if you have it too loose it's not going to work right you need to have just enough deflection in your belt to where you can twist it and you know probably about half a turn twist is just right because as your engine warms up the belt will kind of loosen up anyway and you want to make sure that it's in good shape. Check it for cracks, make sure it's not too shined, and replace it. These are all simple and inexpensive things to make sure that your engine is staying cool, guys. <laughs> Let's not forget about valve adjustment. Valve adjustment, depending on the engine type that you have, for mine, is a zero lash. Whenever you're running chromoly uh, push rods, you can run a zero lash. Now, that's just, uh, just tight enough to where you can turn the push rods, but there's no play in the rocker arms. For most of you other guys out there, it's gonna be either four thousandths or six thousandths on your valve adjustment. You wanna make sure that that's correct, guys, because the way that your valves seat against the heads helps dissipate heat from your heads, and that keeps your engine cool. All right, guys, we are now across from Lyndon B. Johnson Space Center, or also known as NASA Houston. <laughs> All right, guys, number four in what you need to do or what you need to check and make sure it's good to go on your Volkswagen engine to make sure that you're cool. You're running cool in this heat. Let me tell you, it's a little warm today, but it's gorgeous out, right? And I kind of debated on whether or not bringing this one up because I know the controversy surrounded by oil. <laughs> now, I'm gonna tell you what kind of oil I run. What you guys decide to run is up to you. Originally, Back in the day, it was a 30 weight oil that you put in your stock Volkswagen Beetle air-cooled engine. For me, I run VR1, okay? I've heard some A's and no's and, oh, are you sure that's what you run? And my dad sticks to like Castrol 10W30 conventional oil. For me, it's VR1 because one, it has a zinc added in it. 10W30 is what I run during the winter time and I'm about to do an oil change and run the VR1 20W50 during the summertime. Now, I've had no problems with cooling. I have no problems with viscosity breaking down with my oil. So I think that's about it <laughs> that I'm gonna cover with oil. You wanna make sure that you don't have any crazy leaks. Now, Volkswagen engines are gonna seep a little bit here and there. So if you got some seeping going on, not a big deal. You wanna check your oil before you go on any kind of runs, make sure you are where you need to be. And you also wanna make sure what kind of dipstick you have in your engine because 
If it's not the original dipstick, it might be reading incorrectly, guys. So you wanna pay attention to how much oil you're supposed to be putting into your engine when you do your oil changes, okay? Now for mine, it's a little bit different because of like the sump. I have a 1.5 quart additional sump that's on the bottom of the general. And I also have my remote oil cooler, okay? So with all of this together in the lines, I have about six quarts of oil in my engine right now. That's about twice what the, the stock would have been. So know your oil, make your selection wisely. I would recommend staying away from uh, synthetic oils. Stick with a conventional oil. If you're not gonna have an oil that has zinc in it, you wanna go ahead and add zinc because with lifters and the camshafts that we run in these engines, you wanna have zinc in there because it helps protect the surfaces because of their tappet type. You know, they got metal against metal and they're not hydraulic. Well, unless you got type four, you might have hydraulic lifters then, but zinc is a good deal, guys, all right? So find a good oil that you're happy with <laughs> and make sure that you put like a zinc additive in there because it'll protect your engine. All right, guys, moving on to the final location, which I think will be the garage where we do the final discussion. And number five, the fifth thing that you need to do to your Volkswagen engine your air-cooled engine, to make sure that it stays alive during the summertime and this 90-something plus degree heat, guys. All right, talk to you soon, back at the garage. All right, guys, we are back in the garage in time for number five. What is the fifth and final thing that I would like to bring up to you guys about your Volkswagens and things that you do that you modify? And it's tire size, guys. Uh, you always have to take into consideration the type of wheels and tires that you're running because your transmission is geared specific to that radius, the combined radius of the wheel and the tire. Well, it was tall, <laughs> tall and skinny. They started off tall and skinny, almost a 16 inch wheel actually on early Beatles, Beatles, like around 50, early 50s, like 52, up to 52, they used like a 16 inch wheel that was super, super thin. A uh, picture for reference right over here. <laughs> As the years went on and horsepower increased, wheels got smaller and wider for more stability. <laughs> so pay attention to the wheels that you're putting on there. If your wheel size is too small, say like you're running a 13 inch wheel, and you've got a low profile tire and it's on the rear end of your car, on the front end, not such a big deal. You just gotta get it tucked up underneath the fender. On the rear end of your car, the driving wheels, it's gonna overwork your engine. So you're not gonna be able to go as fast down the road. For reference, I have listed the engine temperatures right here for you guys. <laughs> so, one through five. So for review, number one was seals, engine seals. Number two was your tin, your engine tin. Number three was doing a good tune-up. And you guys should be doing tune-ups on your car pretty regularly. Well, if you're driving it, you should be doing it pretty regularly. Number four, mm, oil. The controversial subject, oil. And number five, wheels and tires, guys. Now, I also wanted to bring up a few things that you can do to help mitigate or to improve the cooling of your air cooled engine. Because it's one thing to kind of point out some of the things that you should be looking out for, but what do you do? What are some of the good things you can do to improve the cooling on your Volkswagen engine? Now, there's gonna be the stock purists out there that uh, aren't gonna have anything to do with these items. And that's fine, guys. <laughs> I have no problem with stock pure engines because they're not high horsepower. So you're not causing a whole lot of engine heat increases. But uh, whenever you start to modify your engine, which I love to modify my engine <clears throat> and drive kind of crazy. So uh, added cooling is super important. One of the first things that you guys can do and one of the simplest things that you can do is add a doghouse oil cooler. Now, the general here has not just the 
remote oil cooler, which is nice, but it also has the doghouse oil cooler. And that adds extra capacity and a bigger fan inside the fan shroud to move more air. So that's pretty cool, right? Yeah. What is, oh yeah, number two was the uh, thing that you can do is a remote oil cooler. And I got a video over here, <laughs> somewhere up there, on adding an external oil cooler. But a lot of things come into play with that. When you add the doghouse oil cooler, all you're doing is replacing the shroud, the, the fan shroud, uh, the fan itself inside the fan shroud, and then the doghouse cooler. There are some extra tins that you have to add that kind of like uh, direct the air out to the back of the engine. So the back piece or mm, the front tin so you can get the doghouse cooler to go out there. And there's also like a Hoover bit that goes at the bottom of the doghouse oil cooler that helps direct air correctly. What this does is it allows air to flow better over number three cylinder. Number three cylinder is normally the one that overheats. So that's what the doghouse cooler does. And it was incorporated in later Volkswagen Beetles. So it's kind of stock, stock, stockish. <laughs> okay, the next thing that I want to talk about is and this is probably even simpler than doing the doghouse cooler, actually it is simpler, is checking the jetting on your carburetor. If you're running a single carburetor or dual carburetors for, you know, either, either or, dual carburetors or single carburetor, your jetting, you might need to up your main jet. If you're running kind of hot, it could be because you're not getting enough fuel down into your cylinders and it's running lean. A lean engine is gonna run hotter, guys. So, it's good information, right? Yeah, <laughs> tech tip for the day. <laughs> All right, guys, hope you enjoyed this video today. It was kind of cool cruising around, uh, you know, my local area here and seeing the sights and talking about some of the ways to help keep your air-cooled engine cooler, especially with the hotter temperatures coming this summer. So if you enjoy the, enjoy the content, guys, don't forget to hit the, the like off to this side. Sub if you haven't subbed yet. There's lots of you guys watching and not subbing, which I don't understand. That means you have to go look for my videos instead of them just showing up in your feed. <laughs> Don't forget to put comments down below, guys, on what you do to help keep your air-cooled engine cool because there's more out there. There's more things out there. I'm sure of it. Okay. There was one final thing that I want to talk about, and that's gauges because I'm fixing to add some gauges to Goose. And what gauges am I adding? I'm adding an RPM gauge, which is good to know what my engine revolutions are. And I'm also adding... <laughs> That was kind of saucy. <laughs> I'm also adding an oil temperature gauge so that I can monitor my oil temperature. Now, there's certain places where you want to put sending units. Not all places are the same, like the front uh, oil relief valve, the back oil relief valve, the sump fill location or the pressure location. Where is the best place to put an oil sending unit? I guess you guys have to wait and see that video coming soon. <laughs> I'm also uh, fabricating my own uh, gauge pod cluster because for oval windows, the selections are minimal. Minimal. <laughs> Don't forget, if you have any questions, hit me up on uh, my social media or send me an email. That's down in the description below. Have a great weekend. Hope everybody's staying safe out there. There's a lot of craziness going on right now. And, uh, you know, it's it's a dangerous, dangerous world. So stay safe. Uh, get out in the garage. It doesn't work. Spend some time with a girl, the other girl, this girl, not my girl, but your girl. <laughs> Talk to you guys soon. This is Jason with JW Classic VW, and I'll see you guys on the next one.